Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be filming a Q&A video. As you can see, I'm sitting in my winter theme living room. I'm so ready to get some spring cheer into this room. Um, I did do the mantle the other day and that will be in a future video, but um, I have the tree to my left here and there's some splashes of green in here that I had uh, you know, over the winter. I'm so ready to get some spring cheer in here. Can't wait. And Pebbles just decided to join me here. Behind me is Twinkle asleep on his spot. Um, I'm really picky with my cats. They're not allowed to be on the furniture directly. Um, so I always have a towel that I put over the back of the love seat and that is usually where he sleeps. And then she sometimes is on there too. And she has some other spots in here that she enjoys you know, being. Of course, my lap is probably her favorite spot. So anytime I sit anywhere in our house, she usually climbs on my lap, which is really sweet, but I always feel bad because often I have to get up soon and go about to do my things. And then I disrupt her nap. So let's get to the questions. They are from the previous five videos. I post a video a week plus the Q&A end of every month or beginning of the next. And the first set of questions are from last month's Q&A. Susie Clary says, how did you get started in this business? I could probably make a whole video on this question, but I'll try to keep it short here. Um, I have always loved to make things, whether it was just for myself or to sell. And I feel like I've always kind of been in this business one way or the other. Uh, of course, not always through a YouTube channel like this or an Etsy shop. I didn't have that technology, you know, most of my life. So back to the question, you know, how did I actually start the business? It wasn't a business to begin with. It still sometimes doesn't seem like that to me. It's more like a hobby, but I guess it was just years of, you know, creating and then eventually being able to share it with people and hopefully inspiring you guys. But someday I'll make a video on what all took place before you guys got to know me through YouTube. And I would definitely love to encourage any of you that kind of want to do this sort of thing to go for it because like I often say, if I can, you can too. And with this business, it's always a growing thing. I don't, I don't think I'll ever feel like now I'm where I need to be and I'm not going further. Like it's, it's still a, I, I have so much to learn. Uh, the next question here, Brent and Natasha Dirksen, did you sew your wedding dress or a friend? Your husband going back for the sink made my heart happy. Trust me, it made my heart happy too. I sewed my own wedding dress. It was nothing fancy, of course. I was, you know, Amish at the time, but I still have it tucked away somewhere in storage. Uh, the next question here, have you ever used white wax on the items you paint? What about baking soda? Uh, never baking soda. I guess that would be something to try maybe. And I did use white wax one time on a piece that I can remember. And I'll try to flash that little table on the screen. It was kind of out of my comfort zone, that color of green, but I did use the white wax to bring out the character. Uh, Beverly R says, what is your daytime or nighttime beauty routine? Being outdoors as much as you are, just wondered how you treat your skin. Also, do you have a favorite makeup product? So for the past couple of years, I have started using Arbonne products. I'm sure many of you have heard of that. Um, a lady from our church kind of got me started and you have to buy like through a consultant. I'll try to leave a link down below if I can get one in case you want to check it out, but I really like their products. They're supposed to be, you know, healthy. And as far as makeup, I don't use a lot of makeup, but I do use a CC cream that is like a tinted moisturizer, also from Arbonne. CC cream and mascara are my two main makeup products that I use. The mascara I just buy at Walmart, not even sure what brand. And then I did get a, an eyeshadow kit just recently from Arbonne that I've used a couple times. I don't use a lot of it, but just now and then when I get dressed up, I don't have great looking skin, so I probably shouldn't be giving skincare advice out, but that's just what I use. And yes, I do love the outdoors, and I'm sure people can tell just by looking at my skin that I haven't always taken care of it like I should have. Uh, the next questions are from the Trash to Treasure video. Uh, the first question here is Diag saying, would you consider doing a video explaining about the tools you use and how to work with them. Um, I should probably do an updated one. I had done one a couple of years ago where I shared my favorite power tools and I'll try to link that down below in case you want to check it out. But uh, it would definitely be time to do another one because I do have some new favorites. Create7 says, may I also ask what camera equipment you use? I do all of my filming with the camera I'm using right now, which is a Canon Rebel T6i and I'm just using the kit lens. I do have another lens that I use, like a better one that I use for pictures. But in all honesty, it's probably not the best camera for YouTubing. It's a great camera to 
have with you if you're you know traveling it takes good quality pictures but i feel like the autofocus isn't always the best speaking of cameras i have one that i want to recommend to you guys that i would never be without it is the canon power shot sx50 um, it's just an awesome camera to have around the house it's a nice size and the zoom on it is amazing like i still can't believe if i'm out you know bird watching or something i would prefer that camera over a pair of binoculars you can zoom in a bird from afar and just get a nice picture of it if you hold it you know nice and steady and then just taking photos around the house or videos uh, just an awesome little camera for traveling it's an awesome camera i would never be without it even if we go on grueling mountain hikes i will have it hanging around my neck it's not that heavy and yet it takes amazing pictures i guess that was kind of off on a bunny trail but i needed to throw that in there in case you're looking for a camera that isn't really that expensive and is a nice size and takes great pictures Fran Wilson asks, will you be selling wood rabbits for Easter? Actually, yes, we are planning to, and I'll try to throw a picture on the screen. They're not quite finished yet, but keep an eye out for them. They're pretty cute. I apologize for the lighting in this video. I feel like it's so bright now behind me. It probably looks like I'm sitting in a haze. Uh, Lisa from Kentucky says, could you ask, could I ask which you like working with more, the Cricut or the Cameo? I know you've not had the Cricut very long, but from your experience for someone wanting to purchase one of them, which one would you recommend? That's always such a tough question for me to answer. I mean, both machines are amazing and awesome. Um, I'm probably a bit biased because I've you know, had the Cameo for years. I know it so well, and it's still probably the easiest for me to go and use because I'm used to it. But I did notice with the Cricut, I was able to just quickly pick up on things on that program. I, I think like the design space program is so much easier to understand than what Silhouette Studio is. I don't know, is it because I was you know, used to working with studio that I was able to, you know, master it sooner with Cricut because they are similar, but I would still say the, the design space, the Cricut program would be easier for a beginner. So if I had to choose one for a beginner, I would probably pick the Cricut. Can't believe I'm saying that because again, I love the Cameo too. Uh, it's not that they both, like they both do amazing jobs with, you know, cutting out. I feel like the end result will be the same. And I think even the Cricut is known to be able to cut more materials, uh, but often I just cut vinyl. So to me, the Cameo is you know awesome for that. Um, I know the Cricut can cut up to like 300 different types of materials you can actually put in the settings. And I'm pretty sure that's a lot more than what the Cameo has in their settings. Uh, but again, just going by the actual program and how to you know master it, I would probably pick the Cricut. Melanie Moore says, can I ask why you switched to E6000 to glue the wood tiles together from the wood glue? So yeah, when I started, I used the wood glue with my air nailer. Like I would glue every little piece and then you know nail it together. That makes a good combination to hold something together, you know, the wood glue and the, the air nailer. But when I when it came to gluing my two sections together for the tray, I wasn't able to use my nailer. I couldn't get in there to get a nail in there. So I had to rely solely on glue and E6000 glue bonds anything together. Like I'm so impressed with, I have glued you know, glass together already and uh, other types of material, and I just have a lot of faith in that glue. I feel the wood glue probably would have done the job too, but I guess it's just a thing that's in my head. I just feel like the E6000 is such a good bonding glue and that's why I use that one. The next questions are from the Etsy journey video. The first question here is Don Westerbeck saying, question, why would you need a living room out there in your Etsy shop when you have one in the house and maybe a rec room in the basement? Is it because you and your family just want to hang out while you work? Um, well, first of all, we don't have a rec room in the basement. We just have this living room here in the house. And then often weekends, you know, my husband and I, we might be here, you know, in the living room and our boys would have loved to have a space where they could hang with their friends. So that's basically why we have that room out there. Uh, we don't, our upstairs, which I don't think I've ever really showed you guys the upstairs, but the rooms are all really small. And Kenny, our oldest, has about, you know, six, seven guys that he hangs with every weekend. And it's just really not a lot of room in our house for that amount of people. And our walls are really thin. It's just, you know, there's not a lot of privacy or a place for them to kind of get away here in our house. So we thought it would be nice if they'd have a space out there to kind of, you know, hang out. So that's what has been done, I think, ever since we've had the room. I think every weekend that room has been used. So it's mostly a weekend room, I guess you could call it. Um, definitely want to have some family movie nights out there too um, with the recliners there it's you know much more relaxing 
but so far we've really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know that we'll ever have another, you know, family room or rec room here in the house besides just, you know, the living room here, but uh, definitely been worth it so far to have that room out there. Uh, Lori W. says, I went back to try to find the width of your plywood shiplap. I'm re getting ready to do a shiplap wall in my sunroom, sounds nice, and would like to know the strip width and what do you use for spacers. Um, yeah, so the strip width, five inches is just perfect to me, like that's easy on my eyes to cut them five inches wide, that's what I like. And then for spacers, we started out when we started installing shiplap, which the wall here to my right is what I did first, like was my first shiplap experience. And I used nickels. I think the thickness of a nickel is just right. And then as we continued installing our shiplap, we were able to just kind of eye it. We didn't always use the nickel, but it probably would be a good idea though, if you want to get it really nice and even to you know always use that nickel. But we found out you know some of our walls aren't even, so in the end it wouldn't come out evenly. So sometimes it was just easier to kind of stand back and eye it. And just maybe sometimes you had to have the one end just little further apart just to make so it would come out even in the end then, if that makes sense. Uh, the next question here is Organized Chaos says, Mary, I seem to remember you putting contact paper on the countertops in your basement. I am wondering how that held up. Um, it's actually holding out quite well. Of course, we don't use that countertop on a regular basis. It's not like our everyday you know, countertop in the kitchen. Although I know some people that use that for their uh, countertop and I think so far it's you know, holding out nicely for them. Um, I had read somewhere, maybe on someone's blog, um, that you know if you do end up getting a little tear or a scratch or a nick in it, you can always just pull it up and replace that piece. Uh, so I guess if you have an ugly enough countertop, it might be uh, better than you know having that one to look at every day. Lynn Novak says, were you two speaking Pennsylvania Dutch at 2015? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, we were. It was John and I, we were hanging blinds in the Etsy shop. And sometimes I like to throw a clip in because I know some of you can understand it. And I figure for those of you that can understand it, maybe it would be fascinating to hear another language. I don't know, but um, I know at the time I was explaining to him the quality wasn't the best because we weren't wearing you know microphones or anything. But um, I was holding the blind up and kind of explaining to John that there's going to be a space on each side. Uh, can we just kind of eye it? I said to get you know to get it even. And he's the type, you know, he always measures everything. And I think he called me an ire there in the conversation, which really isn't a word, but he uh, calls me that since I'm known to just kind of eyeball something instead of, you know, measuring it and doing it correctly. Uh, the next question here is, could you share how you photograph your things for Etsy? Um, there's really nothing, you know, fancy about it. The way that I do it, I just use, you know, props that I already have here in the house and kind of set my items, you know, among some other, you know, decorations. Although you want to watch so you don't take away from your actual item. You know, I've seen pictures already where I'm not sure what is actually being sold. Um, I like to use like a shiplap wall as my backdrop. Now, I, I know you can actually go buy or make your own, you know, backdrops. Um, maybe something that, like a surface, just a, maybe even a plain white surface and then like a backdrop that maybe looks like wood or uh, whatever you, you know, prefer. But for me, I just, yeah, again, use whatever I have kind of here in my house. Uh, I probably should have more of a cohesive background for all of my listing photos. Sometimes when I'm on my Etsy shop, I'm like, it just kind of looks busy with all the different backgrounds. But so far, I just really haven't gotten around to it. But I do want to mention the most important thing of all is the lighting. If I have a day that the lighting's not good, I will not take the pictures. That's how important it is to me. Um, that is key to taking good pictures is the lighting. And I don't even consider myself a professional by any means, but I do notice that if your lighting's good, your picture's going to look good. Sarah Wenning says, great background on how you set up your Etsy business. What percentage of your business comes from furniture sales? What venues do you use to sell furniture? Um, actually, in that video, when I talked about the Etsy shop, I didn't really include the furniture. That would be a separate thing. I don't sell any furniture through Etsy. Um, had debated doing that a while back, a couple years ago, uh, but it's really hard to, with shipping and all. So I, so far, have not really gotten into that. But I do sell my furniture at the Walnut Creek Antique Mall. Right now, that's the only outlet I have for you know my repurposed furniture. Before that, I would always just, you know, we'd have annual garage sales. And then I did the vintage fair for a number of years where I uh, did, you know, once a year, I had a, a booth there and sold all of my furniture that had been piling up that, you know, previous year. And sometimes I would use like a Facebook marketplace to sell furniture. 
But right now it just works really well with uh, just using the antique mall booth to kind of get my furniture moving. I've really enjoyed that. So the next questions are from the dining room challenge. The first one here is Eve M asking, just wondering, do you ever get tired of so much white in your home? I don't, I love whites. Um, and I feel like I have so many different colors or shades of white here uh, in our home. It's not, you know, that maybe that's why I don't grow tired of it. I feel like if everything were just one stark white color, I probably wouldn't really like that. But uh, just the wall that you see here to my left, uh, that is a Darling Dove color. It's kind of an off-white, like a warm kind of beige color. And then the wall to my right here is a Spectral, one of my favorite white colors. It's more of a gray white. And there's all kinds of, just wh where I'm sitting here, I see all kinds of different whites. It's not like they're you know all the same. Uh, Stacy Hall says, I have a question about spray painting in cold temperatures. Do you spray paint in temperatures above 52 degrees or what advice can you give? I spray paint in any weather or temperature. Uh, I know on the can it will tell you a certain temperature that it should be or warmer, but I feel like if you spray paint your item, even if it's in the 20s, which I think in this video it was, uh, just take it inside then to dry it. I think that's you know the important part is so that it dries nicely in a warmer temperature. Now I know recently I was spray painting outside. I think it was the Valentine hearts, like the wooden hearts. I took those outside to spray paint them. I used my sprayer, which would have been a water-based paint, and the little particles of paint actually froze on the hearts on some of them. But I noticed when I took it in and it started to dry you know, in the warmer temperature, it evened itself out and it was fine. Uh, Kathy Brooks says, oh my is all I can say. The room is beautiful. I remember you saying you like changing things in your home, but why did you do it this time? I asked because the room was beautiful before. I love your channel. Well, thank you for those kind words. I probably should have explained in the video, I don't think I did, but the dining room that I set up in that video was actually out in the Etsy shop, which I call it kind of my studio space. Um, it's just a section of the Etsy shop where I have the shiplap wall and I have you know room to actually take pictures. I don't have to move things around. So that is what I used was that space. It wasn't our dining room here in our house. I wouldn't change that, I don't think. I really like it right now. You know, I'm not saying that it wouldn't eventually get a makeover of some kind, but for now I, I like it the way it is. Uh, Kim Becker says, I have a question. Is there a reason to take the old vinyl off the chairs? I was thinking they might serve to protect the stuffing. Um, I think you're referring to maybe I could have just put the fabric over the old vinyl. I did debate doing that because it was a pickle to take that vinyl off, but uh, after you get so many layers you know, underneath that I, I was just afraid it would create too much of a space between the wood part of the chair and the actual seat because um, the vinyl was kind of thick already and then with my fabric layers in there it would have kind of brought it up and I just wasn't sure that that would really work the best but I thought too you know maybe I wouldn't really have had to take it off and maybe it would have protected the stuffing but you know now of course I'm glad that I did I think it kind of looks better the way it is and I also was a little worried that the dark vinyl would show through my kind of white fabric um, R.L. Rector says, I love it. What are you going to do with it? Um, I'll probably end up having the pieces up in my booth at the antique mall eventually, as far as I know, unless I come up with something else in the meantime. But first, I'll definitely need to move some of the furniture that is presently in my booth you know, through so I um, have room for more. Uh, the last questions are from the canning video. Uh, Phyllis says, I'm not sure you reply, but I wanted to know where you got your noodles for your soup. Um, I got those at a local market here in our area, Walnut Creek Cheese. Uh, Mrs. Miller's Noodles is what they're called, and the factory is local here too. It's They're made in Fredericksburg, I believe, or they used to be, and I believe, I don't think they sell out of their factory there in Fredericksburg. You would need to probably visit the Walnut Creek Cheese places or, I don't know, would Troyer's, that's another market here in our area, would they have some too? But yeah, again, they're called Mrs. Miller's Noodles if you're ever looking for a good noodle. Uh, the next question here, Louise Rushlow says, how long will the broth be good? And also, do you make jam? Would love how to see how to make jam and also breads. Um, I actually did a video over Christmas where I made a delicious homemade jam with just, I think, three ingredients. Um, I'll try to link that um, video down below in case you want to check it out. But I think in that same one, I also baked some bread. Then as far as how long will the broth be good for, um, I would think it should be good, you know, maybe up to a week in your refrigerator after the lid has been taken off. Um, Annette Gilmore says, one question, how long do the jars of broth last for, please? Which I guess I just answered that. And about the feeder, just a thought that you should have some on your Etsy shop. 
I will keep that in mind. My husband and son had actually made that feeder and I love it. It's such a, I love the sleek look of it and um, I should mention that to them. I'm pretty sure I don't have time to make bird feeders, but maybe if they would want to make something like that, I could possibly offer them to you guys. So I think that is all the questions. I do want to mention on that canning video, I probably should have said just a little bit more. Um, I know I mentioned at the beginning, you know, to make sure to use what you think is safe for you, you know, when canning anything, because I know, you know, a pressure canner would probably be the best option. Like I said, we always use the hot water bath at home and it you know, always worked for us, but I don't want to be responsible for making anyone sick. And I did get some comments on that video that people were concerned about that. Uh, something I definitely want to invest in is a pressure canner. I would love to see the difference and just kind of, I like to try new things, so I may well invest in one soon. And I did want to mention in the video, and I forgot, that if you use your canned goods that you just canned, uh, you want to make sure that if you take your lid off, it actually is kind of hard to pull off the jar. Like every now and then I'll bring a jar up from the basement and I'll pop the lid off and in my mind I think, you know, that wasn't stuck on hard enough like it should be. And even if I smell the food and it smells okay, I still, it has to come off pretty hard before I'll use it. And that rarely happens, but now and then I have a jar where, you know, that happens and I, I just don't really trust it, so I dump it. But I, I wanted to mention that just so you know, if you, you know, if you've never canned before, you might not know that it, it should come up kind of hard off the, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll never just use my fingernails. I think some people do that, but I'd be afraid, you know, I'd break them off, but I usually use a spoon or something to kind of pry the lid off, but it definitely should come off kind of hard if it's sealed, you know, perfectly. So just wanted to mention that. So thanks guys for hanging out with me here in my living room with this Q&A. I hope you got something out of it. Um, like I've mentioned before, I'm never so confident about my Q&As. I feel they're probably a tad boring, but I'm excited for Wednesday's video. I go antique mall shopping here in our area, and then next week's video starts the spring decorating. Uh, so that's always a fun time for me because I love spring. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.